Sarah Sena. Welcome to day two of Google Cloud Next. I'll be co-hosting today alongside Urs Holzley, and we've got a really great lineup of new technology and demos from Google Cloud. But before we get started, I want to thank you all for taking time out of your busy week to be here with us. Yesterday was an incredible first day at Next. Thomas and Sundar made some amazing announcements. This week, we're releasing over 100 new products, services, and programs for you. We're kicking off day two now with this keynote, a cloud built for developers. After this, we'll jump right into a live developer Q&A where you can ask us anything. And then tomorrow is community day. And that will be totally dedicated to you for learning, discussions, networking, and all kinds of fun. All right. Let's get things started by welcoming Ors. Hi, Ors. Hi, Aparna. Hi, everyone. I hope you're as excited as I am to get started today. And since this is a developer keynote, we'll kick it off with our first demo right away from Google Research and our DeepMind colleagues who've been working on some amazing voice technology. Welcome to Next 21. Pour commencer, je voudrais tous vous remercier. Ab donner avec un vivant pour rester à qui et compartir votre Zeit avec nous aujourd'hui. Now, before you get too impressed by my language skills, I did not actually speak these words. What you just heard is a custom text-to-speech model that has trained on my voice and that can generate synthetic speech in different languages. And our teams have already started using this technology to improve our voice experience for all users. That's right. Google's project Euphonia is already using custom voice to help people with atypical speech to communicate and be better understood. Technology like this creates a more inclusive world. To find out more about this, check out the Project Euphonia website. Custom voice is available today for select cloud customers. We're very mindful of the potential misuses of this technology, and we're taking great care to prevent them by reviewing each use case uniquely. Now, look around you. Every day you see innovation that's brought to you uh, by developers like yourself with persistence and skill. And Google has a long tradition of supporting developers in open source and elsewhere. Uh, for years, uh, you've been using technologies like uh, Kubernetes, Firebase, TensorFlow, uh, Go, Angular, gRPC, many others. And when we built Google Cloud, we built it for developers, and we were inspired by all the things you've created with it. And our job is quite simply to make it easier for you to do what you love. So we focus on making you as productive as, productive as possible with uh, the least amount of effort. And so in everything we design, we take all the feedback that you're sharing with us and uh, build a cloud platform that just works. Uh, whether that's by natively embedding key security or sustainability features into the platform itself, or by feature featuring partner solutions uh, right within our own console, we're really focused on one goal, giving you the best developer experience of any cloud provider. Google Cloud has had tremendous traction with digital native customers since our very early days. How have you seen customer and partner adoption evolve since then? Well, many of our biggest customers are cloud natives, but we've seen tremendous adoption by a broad segment of enterprise customers in traditional industries as well, like entertainment or financial services. For example, Major League Baseball, uh, which is North America's oldest and most attended professional sports league, is using Google Cloud to modernize fan engagement and to increase operational efficiency. And Equifax, uh, which was founded in 1899 and is one of the world's largest consumer credit reporting agencies, is transforming itself from a credit bureau to a next generation data analytics and technology company built on Google Cloud. We've seen a huge shift. Essentially, every company is becoming a tech company to increase their competitiveness and establish leadership in their industries. Developer talent and cloud services are at the heart of this shift. Whether you call that digital transformation or something else, 
companies of all sizes are finding that Google Cloud is optimized to help make your data, your applications, and your talent more useful and relevant to your business. Exactly. And as Thomas mentioned yesterday, everyone needs to be thinking through how they'll fundamentally shift into a technology company to serve their customers in the most meaningful ways 10 years from now. And you as developers are key to making this happen. So organizations ask themselves, do we have the most cutting edge technology to become a leader in our industry? And you, the developers, are well equipped to answer this. And we are super focused uh, on making you and your company successful. And there's two areas we focus on to support your growth. First, of course, making it easier for developers to get their job done. Second, investing in the developer community so that everyone can learn and grow from each other. So let's talk about how Google Cloud is making it easier for developers to get their job done. Um, from our transformational infrastructure stack to our deep innovations in data, security, uh, ML, every feature we release starts with simplifying the developer experience. Uh, take our open cloud experience, for, for example. We recently expanded our compute stack uh, to include Tau VMs that deliver 42% better price performance over any other comparable solution in the market with no recompile. And thanks to our zero trust approach to security, Google Cloud was ranked a leader in IaaS platform native security by Forrester well ahead of the competition. And of course, we're focusing also on managed services that make it easy for you to deploy, scale, and manage Kubernetes clusters uh, on the edge or in the cloud. And Google Cloud has the most complete and most secure container experience for developers. In fact, the 2021 Gartner Solution Scorecard for Google Kubernetes Engine gave GKE an overall score of 92, again, well ahead of the competition. And of course, with GKE and Anthos, you can run these containers anywhere, on-premise, other clouds, on the edge, you know, anywhere. So it's fair to say that in the years since Google invented Kubernetes, containers have really completely revolutionized IT operations. Now recently, European filmmakers from honeypot.io created a documentary on the history of Kubernetes, and it will be out in January 2022, and you are the very first audience to have a look at the trailer right now, so let's roll that. Sounds, yeah, sounds Do I good. look at you, look at camera? Oh, yeah. 2013, it was clear that cloud was a thing, but most folks were focused on infrastructure cloud. The dirty secret for a long time is like, you know, people who are either building their own data centers, or using colos, there's a huge resource waste. And so at that point, automation tools are all the rave. People are now trying to abstract the way the servers. Google was looking for ways to apply its internal infrastructure expertise to the cloud. As we started looking at technologies like Docker, we were like impressed by the strength of what they'd accomplished in solving a very specific problem. This is going to happen with us or without us. Google had to make a bold move in the cloud space to be the long-term winner. Every big startup I felt like had a container orchestration project and half of them were announced at DockerCon 2014. Open source is most successful when it's played as a positive sum game. This is such a great community. Yeah, absolutely. I recognize a lot of the faces and I can't wait to see the film. Uh, now let's get back to uh, how we're making it easier for developers uh, uh, for you to build really the leading technology companies of tomorrow. Now Kubernetes deployments can involve a fair bit of manual configuration, uh, clusters, nodes, load balancers, YAMLs, et cetera, but not on Google Cloud because we offer you the most automated and secure Kubernetes experience available. Um, with GKE Autopilot, Google provisions and manages the cluster's entire underlying infrastructure, including control plane, node pools, worker, uh, worker nodes, and they, that lets you focus 
on the higher level services and applications that you're building. Nobody else offers anything like this. Because beyond managing node upgrades, GK Autopilot also automatically configures security features like shielded GKE nodes, secure boot, and workload identity. And it also implements security best practices by blocking less safe features like external IPs or legacy authorization. So you don't get a toy Kubernetes cluster with GKE Autopilot. You get a sophisticated cluster that uses the best practices brought to you by the team that brought to you Kubernetes itself. So you're always up to date and you get the same results as the experts without having to be an expert to yourself. The pandemic put developers in the driver's seat and you all drove GKE usage to all time highs. At the same time, we saw explosive growth in the use of Google Cloud's serverless offerings, especially Cloud Run and Cloud Functions. It's mainly enterprise developers who have driven this growth. Cloud Run excels at developer experience. It's earned the highest customer satisfaction rating among developers as measured by User Research International. Cloud Run combines the best of both worlds, bringing you serverless and containers. There's no cluster to set up or configure, so developers are able to scale seamlessly and securely. Under the hood, Cloud Run scales container instances in isolated sandboxes. Any access outside a sandbox is mediated by network controls or identity and access management, or both. And it isn't just for new apps. Cloud Run supports traditional workloads, like Java Spring Boot and ASP.NET. We also recently introduced committed use discounts to lower the cost at scale. And we've introduced Always On CPU, which enables asynchronous and background processes to be used on Cloud Run. So you have all the benefits of serverless without the restrictions. The theme here is easier, more secure development, especially with remote work. You're absolutely right. Uh, we've been focusing on remote development for some time now, but the pandemic has certainly accelerated the shift. Now, what would be more essential to remote development than to be able to use the full power of GCP right from your laptop with zero local setup? Uh, Cloud Shell Editor is a context-aware remote development environment that lets you develop and manage applications securely from any browser. It supports languages like Go, Java, Node, Python, C Sharp, and it comes with an integrated debugger, source control, API explorer, and if you want to test locally on your laptop, it also comes with local emulators for Kubernetes and serverless APIs. Thanks, Ors. Next, let me introduce you to Abby Carey. She's going to show us how Google Cloud makes it easy for you to securely build modern applications, again, right from your laptop. Hi, Abby. Hi, Aparna. We developers have had a hard time writing, extending, deploying, and operating applications, but it doesn't have to be difficult. Let's start with Cloud Shell Editor. It comes with current versions of your favorite dev tools like Docker, Minikube, Scaffold, and more. There's nothing to download or install locally. Tutorials are built into Cloud Shell Editor, which makes it easy to come up to speed on complex topics like GKE. So no more switching between tabs, docs, your terminal, and your code. This integrated experience is highly differentiated from other clouds. You can even author your own tutorials, and that allows your organization to share best practices and onboard new hires faster. Another popular feature is Kubernetes YAML authoring assistance. Let's say I want to add YAML for a service to this project. I can press Control Space and then find the Kubernetes service snippet. Now I can tap through and fill everything in. I also get autocompletes. And if I happen to make a formatting mistake, I am notified that there's an issue in real time. Now many of you prefer to work locally in an IDE. This same YAML authoring assistance, it's also available for VS Code and IntelliJ via the Cloud Code plugin. Cloud Code has built-in support for both Cloud Run and Kubernetes. In fact, if you're using Cloud Run or Functions, you don't need to know Docker. You can build and deploy your app with just one command because Cloud Code or because Cloud Build is integrated under the hood. This is an application with no Docker file. With the new gcloud run deploy command, all I have to do is provide a name for my service, 
And then let it know where my source code lives, which is this current directory, and we're deploying. So nice. And thanks to this ease of use, 98% of users deploy an application to Cloud Run on their first try in less than five minutes. I just showed source code deploys to Cloud Run. But there are more ways Google Cloud has made deployment easier and more secure. First, I can scan my build container images to check for vulnerabilities. I've already run an on-demand scan on one of my images using gcloud artifacts docker images scan. Now I can copy the ID of my scan and then view my image's vulnerabilities with the list vulnerabilities command. And then once that's finished, a severity level is assigned to each vulnerability to help you prioritize. That's super important. It's really helpful in addressing security concerns earlier in the software development lifecycle. But now, what if your build pipeline is compromised? For that, I can enable binary authorization on my deployed Cloud Run services. This way, only trusted container images are deployed to production. Binary authorization is truly unique in the industry. It enables you to put proactive security measures in place to reduce software supply chain attack risk by blocking deployments that violate policy. And speaking of deploying, we're making it seamless for you to do CICD securely. You can take advantage of serverless build environments within your own private network with Cloud Build private pools. And for advanced CD, we have Google Cloud Deploy, which allows you to create custom delivery pipelines for your specific use case and needs. That is so cool. Well, a real application connects to many supporting cloud services. So Abby, can you show us an example of how we make these integrations easier? Sure. When creating a cloud function, it's easy to integrate with Secret Manager. First, uh, create a secret that stores your API key, which I've already done. Now I can either mount it as a volume or expose it as an environment variable. I'll mount it as a volume, and then I'll name my mount path. This will always point to the latest version of my secret. And now I can securely reference this API key from my source code. This abstraction enables portability and a better local development experience. Cloud Run also integrates with Secret Manager uh, to make it easier to do the right thing and not put sensitive data in source. Love that so much. OK, so now you've written your app, you've deployed your app, and you've connected your app to other Google Cloud resources. What's next? Operating your app in production. Uh, with CloudOps, you get one integrated view for your alerts, events, metrics, and logs. No more jumping around multiple tools as you try to understand what went wrong. That was so awesome, Abby. Thank you for sharing this with us. Thanks, Aparna. In each of these instances, we've done the integration work for you. Because the more work we put into this, the less work you have to do. And this principle applies to security as well. We've put a lot of energy into building security natively into everything we do so that you can innovate with assurance. Both DKE and Cloud Run benefit from the security fixes we implement before vulnerabilities are exposed. Just think about the famous vulnerability uncovered in how Kubernetes was handling proxy requests. We found it, we coordinated and communicated the disclosure, we fixed it for the entire Kubernetes community, and we patched all our products before any customers were impacted. More recently, cyber threats have shifted the focus towards the software supply chain. That's right. Uh, malicious actors are trying to compromise the software supply chain uh, from bad code submission to bypassing the CI CD pipeline altogether. And to help solve these problems, we proposed an industry standard uh, uh, called SALSA. It's a, a security framework that provides common criteria for increasing levels of software security through automation and through cryptographic signing at each stage of the software supply chain. And that makes it uh, uh, possible, but not necessarily easy. And so making it easy for developers to ensure security is super important. And that's why we're focusing on building this security right into the developer tool chain, anticipating and preventing issues ahead of time, not when you're most at risk. So for example, Cloud Build, our service that lets you build, test, and deploy across multiple environments, such as VMs, serverless, Kubernetes, or Firebase now offers Salsa level one compliance by default. Uh, because Cloud Build 
gives you verifiable build provenance. So this provenance lets you trace a binary to the source code that it was built from to prevent tampering and to prove that the code that you think you're running actually is the code you are running. Cloud Build is the first and only CI CD service to offer this capability. But we go beyond that. As you've seen, Build Integrity uh, automatically generates digital signatures, which can then be validated before deployment by binary authorization. That's another Google Cloud first. And so without you needing to do anything, we prevent anyone in your organization from deploying code that has not been built by your legitimate build system. Now, ensuring security post-deployment is equally critical. On GCP, you can enable continuous scanning and you can use our service mesh to embrace a zero trust uh, security model and automatically and declaratively secure your services and the communication. So you can manage authentication, authorization, and encryption between services with little or no changes to the applications themselves. Let me say that again, with little to no changes to the applications themselves. So that means that these security improvements help secure not just new code, but also existing binaries. So you can use them for any application that you're migrating to the cloud. Both Anthos Service Mesh and now Cloud Build Hybrid are available across Google Cloud and your on-premise environment. And they work with uh, VPC service controls and VPC peering to automate the developer security for your enterprise. No other cloud provider protects your software supply chain to this level. Because we started working on software supply chain security long before it was in the headlines. And so by choosing GCP, you benefit from this leading edge focus on security. Whether we're building foundational open source technologies like Kubernetes or Istio, or turning them into fully managed services like GKE and Anthos Service Mesh, our goal is always to reduce complexity for our users. By helping create these industry standards, we can provide safer and simpler services for you, the developer. And that's exactly our approach to securing the software supply chain. We've co-founded the Open Source Security Foundation with other technology leaders to create security standards for open source software. And we're starting to bring products to market like Open Source Insights, which provides you a complete transitive dependency graph for many open source packages. Now, let's turn back to Ors to hear why Google Cloud is best positioned to support you in becoming a technology leader in your industry using data as a core asset. Thanks. Yeah, so far we've been talking about developing and managing code, but data is at the heart of many enterprises. So we also have the leading data cloud products in the industry uh, designed for optimal performance and reliability for applications of all sizes while scaling to immense uh, capacity. Um, now, let's start with databases. When it comes to databases, every cloud gives you choices. Uh, they offer SQL databases, which are great, but unfortunately don't scale. And of course, no SQL databases, which do scale, but unfortunately are not SQL. Only Google Cloud gives you a third choice with Spanner, because Spanner is SQL, and in fact, it just got a Postgres interface, but it scales horizontally, and it can literally handle a billion requests per second. Nobody else has a scalable SQL system, so it's no wonder we're seeing huge adoption. Now on the data warehouse side, we have, of course, the leading cloud data warehouse with BigQuery. Hundreds of customers are using BigQuery at petabyte scale today, petabyte each. And you can run, of course, BigQuery Omni on AWS or Azure. On top of that, open source systems for data lake processing like Flink, Spark, and Beam run natively on Google Cloud in a simpler and more cost-effective way than in other environments. Uh, in fact, you can realize a 57% lower TCO compared to on-premise data lakes for data science uh, projects. Now, on top of that savings, our data cloud also includes the world's first and only auto-scaling and serverless Spark service. And finally, 
Google has deep partnerships with leading data-driven companies, including Databricks, Confluent, MongoDB, Redis Labs, and many others. And so together, we help customers access an open platform that powers analytics at scale, yet is easy to use. Our partner community is central to the health of our cloud business. And we're especially excited about the innovation coming from our data cloud partnerships. Together, we've optimized our infrastructure for performance and efficiency to give our partners that extra edge when they run on Google Cloud. One of our leading data partners is MongoDB. And we have their CEO, Dave Itichiria, here with us today. Welcome, Dave. Hi, everyone. Happy to be here. Dave, one of the trends we're seeing in our enterprise customer base is that they're now competing for leadership positions in their industry by becoming technology companies. How would you say Google Cloud and MongoDB working together can help these customers achieve that transition? Well, Aparna, the companies who are in the leadership positions in their industries are those who have built their competitive advantage using software and data to transform their business. And the key word here is build. You can't buy a competitive advantage, you have to build it. This means you need to enable your developers to innovate as quickly as possible, whether it's building new software to seize new opportunities or to respond to new threats. MongoDB and Google Cloud deeply understand this. Developers choose MongoDB on Google Cloud because we give them the tools they need to be as productive as possible, including having our services available in the Google Cloud console for easy discovery and deployment. Today, MongoDB Atlas runs in 24 Google regions across the world with deep technical integrations with Google's analytic and AI tools. This enables our customers to innovate quickly and emerge as leaders in their industries. As a result, we're seeing explosive growth of our customers embracing the true value of our partnership. That's incredible. So when you think about the development teams at these new customers, what's the biggest challenge that you're helping them solve? Yeah, when you talk to development teams, you find that they spend the most amount of their time trying to work with data, as serving relevant data at the right time to the right audience is critical to building any application. Unfortunately, relational databases are not designed for the way developers think or code, nor are they designed for scale, fault tolerance, <clears throat> or, or, or resilience. Consequently, development teams find it hard to move fast using relational databases. MongoDB is designed to address this problem. We make it very easy for developers to work with data and we're able to address the most demanding requirements for performance, scale, and fault tolerance. The partnership with MongoDB and Google Cloud enables developers around the world to easily build modern software applications to address their needs of today and tomorrow. That's terrific. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. And yes, thanks Dave for joining us. Um, now there's lots of ways developers can improve their productivity. Um, automate tasks that are repetitive, master the command line, use the best tools that make your life easier, or reuse other people's code, you know, just to name a few. And another great way to accelerate your productivity is with building blocks or templates or fully managed services in areas like machine learning. Because on Google Cloud, you don't have to be an expert to build smart applications. With uh, new services like Vertex AI, you can build, deploy, and scale more effective AI models quickly. So that lets you deliver the insights to your organization that will help them create more personalized customer experiences, uh, run more efficient processes, and take that leadership position in your industry. So with that, let's go to our next live demo. Joining me today is Anu Srivastava. She's going to show us how these breakthroughs in AI are advancing cloud adoption and redefining the world of document processing. Hi, Anu. Hey, Aparna. We all know how to work with data when it's in a structured format, like in a database, some JSON, CSV files, or just variables in my code, right? But what about unstructured data? Many of the world's business processes start, include, or end with a document. But these documents can be difficult to process. Think about all the ways you could enhance your application if you could just unlock that data. This is where Google Cloud Document AI comes in. Doc AI is a platform that has solutions and tooling for automating your workflows backed by machine learning. 
we've bundled together some of Google's flagship AI technology, such as computer vision, OCR, natural language understanding, and even Google's expertise in building knowledge graphs, all to provide you with a simple yet powerful way to build applications that better understand unstructured data. Let's go see a demo of Doc AI in action. So here we have a receipt. I was buying some office supplies since we are unfortunately not back in the office yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually upload this into the Doc AI platform. So in our cloud console, we have the Doc AI platform where we have built-in preview mechanisms so you can test out your documents. So this is going to an endpoint which has a specialized model we have specifically trained on a variety of expenses. Google maintains and improves the models for you. Wait a minute. I hope this is not with my data. Absolutely not. We never use your data to train our models. Your data is only used to serve your request. So let's take a look at the data extracted. I've seen this before. Next you're gonna tell me that you're gonna automate my expenses. I knew you would say that. This is the canonical demo use case, right? But have you ever seen it like this? Take a look at this field that I'm highlighting, the supplier address. This address isn't present anywhere in the document. Wow, where did that come from? This is only possible with Google's Document AI. The uh, secret sauce here is that the knowledge graph is able to not only give you back the original text from document, but it's going to enrich your response akin to what you'd see in a search, but as part of your API response. Wow, that's really great. And it's not just this. We have several specialized models for many more doc document types of much higher complexity. Let's take a look at this payslip. So I ran this earlier, and we're looking at the preview output again. You can see that we have some keys, we have some fields, you can see enrichment on the employer name and the address. Once your data is in a schematized format, meaning that we know for every document of a certain doc type, there are common important pieces of information. So what we did is we predefined a set of keys. So what we do is with your extracted data, we merge your data to these predefined keys. So it's much easier to work with than raw OCR. So once it's in a schematized format, it's easier to pass on to a downstream service, or maybe you're using something for analytics like BigQuery or Looker. That makes sense. But what about ensuring accuracy? And also, do you have multi-language support? We know that with important documents such as these, you can't afford any missteps when it comes to accuracy. So that's why Doc AI provides a human in the loop configuration to trigger on confidence scores. So either for specific keys or on the entire document itself. And as for translation, we support over 100 languages such as Spanish, Japanese, Arabic. No other solution on the market supports such a wide array of languages. Human in the loop, translation, and knowledge graph capabilities that can be applied to a wide variety of documents. This seems super useful. Of course, the next big question is, can it be applied to big, bulky, complex documents like, uh, like business contracts? Let's take a look. So here, I read a contract earlier this morning. You can see that there are typical things you'd find in any contract. There are some document names, the parties involved, some dates. And like with every easy to read contract, being sarcastic here, there is an expiration term. So this expiration date actually isn't present anywhere in the document, and it's actually not easy to figure out. It's not in an easily parsable format. Shocker, Google's contract processor is able to figure out this date value by understanding signals found across the entire document. Wow. Well, Anu, before you go, can you tell our awesome developers how they can get started with Doc AI? Absolutely. So I know we covered a lot at just breakneck speed, so check out the breakout sessions on Doc AI to dive deeper. You can also check out the documentation for Code Labs and Quick Starts. We have client libraries in all of your favorite languages, such as Python, Node.js. My personal favorite is Java, but it's an API, so you can really use this with whatever platform or framework you're already using. We are thrilled and look forward to see how you use Google Doc AI to power your applications. That was amazing. Can I have a high five? 
Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Anu. I loved every part of it. Thank you for having me. Another area that Google has invested in deeply, and that's becoming more important to more companies, is sustainability. Many cloud providers have a vision for a sustainable future, and many aim to have uh, to match their electricity co consumption with 100% renewable energy by 2025 or 2030. We accomplished 100% renewable energy in 2017, so we're the only hyperscale cloud to do this today. And all of that with data centers that are twice as efficient as the average data center. This past week, Sundar talked about Google's goal to enable over a billion users to live and work more sustainably by next year. To reach goals like this and those outlined in climate ped pledges made by more organizations every day, we rely on developers like you to do something about it. But we also know that it's difficult. That's right. One of the biggest challenges that companies face is that they lack the tools to account for environmental costs and to help developers address this for their organizations, we built sustainability tools directly into Google Cloud. With uh, Google Cloud Carbon Footprint, you have access to the energy-related uh, emissions data that you need for external carbon disclosures in just one click. Now, you won't need this calculator if you just want to report the net carbon footprint of your workload on GCP, because on GCP, it's always zero. We also have our region picker, where you can choose the data center region with the lowest gross carbon cost right now. Of course, again, your net impact is zero no matter what re region you pick, but this tool lets you help go one step further to become carbon free, not just carbon neutral. Now that's actually a tool that I can't wait to deprecate in 2030 or so, because Google Cloud has committed to be 100% carbon free by 2030, every hour of every day. Now we also realize there's still a lot to learn when it comes to building sustainability. And to help, we just released a masterclass called Sustainable IT Decoded with some of the world's top experts. So check it out for guidance on how we can all build more sustainably. Now, while we're proud to run the cleanest cloud in the industry, we're even more inspired by the work that our customers are doing with Google Cloud to solve climate change challenges that are unique to their business. And today, we bring you a preview of Google Earth Engine and its integration with Google Cloud. With over 700 data sets and 50 petabytes of data today, Earth Engine gives scientists and developers access to the world's largest catalog of satellite imagery and to tools for driving sustainable impact. So let's look at this in a bit more detail with an example of how Google Earth Engine and Google Cloud enable customers to assess risks arising from climate change. But instead of me telling you about it, we've invited Joel Conkling to show you. Thanks, Aparna. The world is constantly changing and that creates opportunities and risks. Helping uncover critical insights about the changing world is why we're integrating Earth Engine into Google Cloud. And that integration is now in private preview. Today, I'll demo a workflow that combines Vertex AI, Earth Engine, BigQuery, and Google Maps Platform to show how Google Cloud makes it incredibly easy for you to innovate and deliver insights and do it quickly. So here's a scenario. You work at an insurance company and you need to analyze your company's exposure to flood risk. You think new buildings may be a strong contributor to that risk, and you want to test your hypothesis. To do that, we first need to understand where the built environment is expanding. In other words, we just need to categorize the surface of the entire planet. That could be hard, but Vertex AI offers the tooling to develop a best-in-class ML model, and Earth Engine provides constantly updated data. Let's fast forward a bit. We finished training our model, and now, Earth Engine is sending satellite imagery to be categorized, so your understanding of the world can update in near real time. Here's the Earth Engine script showing the results of that model. This area in red is where the model estimates the locations of buildings. That's your current built environment. To find the change over time, we need a few more lines of code. These lines of code 
give us a built environment in 2016. And here, we calculate the difference between 2016 and today. When there's a change, it shows up in purple on the map. This is where there are new buildings. So next, we're going to export, sample and export the data so we can do additional analysis in BigQuery. Over in the BigQuery console, this script clusters those data points here and then outputs polygons that show the areas with the biggest changes in the built environment. So at this point, you have a few options. You could combine this data with flood locations you identify around the world, also with Earth Engine. Maybe you want to enhance your model with weather data and physical terrain data. That's available in Earth Engine too. You could also include data on your company's insurance portfolio to gain additional insight into critical risks. We'll wrap up this demo by visualizing our results in a new feature available on Google Maps platform, the open source data viz library DECGL with a BigQuery connector provided by Cardo. So we now have a clear picture of where the built environment is changing and where to focus next for our work on flood risks. In summary, no wrangling data, no need to manage infrastructure, just actionable insights incredibly quickly. We can't wait to see what you'll do with Earth Engine's new integration with Google Cloud. And with that, I'll pass it back to Aperna. Thank you, Joel. It's incredible to see how our customers can use our sustainable technologies to address climate change now. I'm really inspired by all the things we've talked about today. And thinking about how you're going to lead your companies into the future, that's super exciting. No pressure, but it's really up to you. We've invested millions in the developer community over the last five years, and we'll continue to invest in the coming years. And Ors, as proof of that, I understand you have some additional news to share today. Absolutely. I'm really excited to announce today our new developer community program called Google Cloud Innovators. I want to welcome and introduce our first group of leaders who are driving meaningful impact in the industry and their community. So take a look. exciting. Yeah, through this program, we'll give developers access to early technology previews and Google engineers. We'll recognize the expertise of our community influencers by promoting their contributions, and we will work closely with them to solve the toughest problems. So we're excited to come together with this group of innovators. Join us at cloud.google.com slash innovators. So cool. I've been waiting for this all this time. Community is extremely important for companies to create that much needed human connection with developers. And we hope that this gives you a window into the motivation that you all give Google to build cloud products and services that developers love. And we look forward to partnering with you to become the greatest tech companies in your industries. Remember to join us next at the live developer Q&A session and also tomorrow at Community Day. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>